Hey, today I have Michael Cave from Auckland, New Zealand. He is the Managing Director and Senior Advisor of Cave Financial Consulting. Michael, thanks for joining us. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for um, inviting us on. I love your podcast. Oh, thank you very much. Um, we know each other through Strategic Coach. and We've been chatting here and here, here and there. And uh, I'd like you to just introduce yourself, what you do, why you do it, and then maybe give us a little bit of background of your uh, ADHD journey. Sure. So I'm in the financial services, uh, Andre, and we have three business lines. We do home loan lending, we do life insurances and uh, wealth management. And so I started the business back in 2000 um, on the back of an envelope with my dad and on the kitchen table. And uh, we're still here today. So we've got a small team. Um, I've got a married one wife and four kids, and we've added a fifth member that's a a Labrador so, to the family. So we have a pretty busy life. Um, but yeah, I live in Auckland, New Zealand, grew up on a sheep farm, used to ride my horse mm. to school occasionally. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I was on a big farm and uh, loved, loved my sport and rugby and all those sorts of things in New Zealand. And uh, but yeah, recently uh, diagnosed about three years ago with ADHD. And I guess uh, I went and sought that out after sort of learning uh, what it was all about from my son and my daughter who were both diagnosed with ADHD. My daughter probably more ADD, but um, mm. my son ADHD. So and, in, uh, inattentive ADHD. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I guess it's still the same sort of thing, but not yeah. as sort of active. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I guess uh, I soon worked out it was probably coming from myself. So um, when I saw um, got a diagnosis and uh, didn't take them long and um, yeah, been on medication and, but I guess just all the learning around it was something I had no idea knew nothing about it, but right. thanks to my wife, um, she, she researched a lot about it and um, yeah, it's been an amazing revelation for me, but still a journey. Yeah. So you got a lot of understanding and, and things are making sense from the past, eh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and dialing into your sort of podcasts and different things like that. It's been a great help. But yeah, now a lot of understanding of what uh, what I did and why I did it. I yeah. didn't understand. For me, it was that one thing makes my whole life make sense now. Correct. Yeah, yeah. it's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So what I yeah. heard that you, your kids were diagnosed prior to you, and then you yeah, saw a reflection right. in that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and my wife actually showed me the symptoms. And then suggest, hey, well, have you thought about going to get a diagnosis? So with ADHD, uh, you, you know, might take two or three reminders to book an appointment. <laughs> well, it's very common that the kids are actually diagnosed first. And then a lot, I hear this a lot. Then I read the symptoms are like, wait a minute, this is me. And it's yeah, very yeah. common. There's nothing wrong because it's hereditary. It runs in the family and right. genetics. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and so what was the big, after the diagnosis and this clarity now, how do you, is there a different change of feeling, perception, awareness, or just like what are you the same person you were a few years ago then? Yeah, I think so. But I guess with the help of medication, it's been a, a big help. You know, a lot of people fear about it. I don't. I didn't really know much about it, and you hear it. You hear a few negative things, but that's been a really big help. But the other one is, I guess now also just taking some things to help me sleep better at night is, is, is people know with ADHD, you got a, your brain's like a popcorn machine with the ideas mm -hmm. and you know, you can struggle to sleep. So therefore it's a vicious sort of, and we now know how powerful sleep is, but it's a vicious cycle. You know, you don't sleep well and you wake yeah. up and yeah. Um, is it more the out. fact that your brain's not stopping or is not slower? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's just, just more, I can focus now. I'm more relaxed, more yeah, attentive. Yeah. I'm not interrupting people as, as much, you know, I'm, I'm nicer with my, or not, I guess more patient with my staff, you know, I'm not yeah. up and down around, off my desk. I can, um, but then I, the understanding is a big help. So go and call, I'm doing this. Okay. They make, this is a common trait or symptom of ADHD. So now I'm sort of not wrestling with it. I'm, right. I'm, and I, I think that has a lot to do with the awareness. So it's, correct. I've always said, like, if it's a trait when it's used properly, and if it's overused or underused, then it becomes a symptom. Correct. Right. Yeah. It's like a lot of your strengths. So be, just being what I heard from you there, we were saying, now being more aware, you're a lot more patient with your, with your team. Doesn't mean yeah. you've lost, you know, like you've gained patience. It's just you're aware that you are impatient. Correct. And <laughs> now I can, instead of spewing something out, I now stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I keep interrupting, I go, okay. Yeah. Or I'll think, um, 
I'll listen a little bit more uh, yeah. and hold my ideas back or, or whatever it is. And same with the family life as well. Mm-hmm. So just really yeah. understanding, okay, the, what's going on. Um, but then, yeah, seeing the stuff as a strength, you know, um, as well. That's a really exciting part about it. Well, let's, can I talk a little bit more about the family? Like once you got the diagnosis, you mentioned your wife researched it a lot. Um, was there a change after that? And what would you attribute a, the change to? Yeah, I think as a couple, we we got on the same page. And again, a lot of understanding, okay, these are common symptoms, strengths, traits. And then you can you sort of know what battles to fight and not fight and 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 things to appreciate. And so rather than just reacting, you can be proactive, you know, around holidays, around changes in, in diaries and um, work and 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 relationships and friendships all those sorts of things you know mother's day you're all excited or somebody's birthday and then yeah um but and it didn't a lot of the times it wouldn't go well and then you'd go okay this is probably why it's not going well let's yeah. change things up so yeah and i found like with me and my wife once it's more was awareness of the triggers correct the yeah. triggers yeah. And, and i found like a lot of times they don't they were never aware of the triggers that would set off the symptoms or you know mm. And that yeah. really improved the understanding. There's more awareness again, right? Like, yeah, so that's good. right. Yeah. And so, I mean, I guess understanding Lee and knowledge gives you understanding, no understanding gives you wisdom. And then, I guess, wisdom is knowing, you know, what to do. Yeah. Okay. yeah exactly. Yeah. I like that. So, knowledge is, well, you got to repeat that. I didn't get that. Yeah. Knowledge, is right um, knowledge gives you understanding, and then understanding can lead to wisdom. But a lot of people don't go to the next step. You know, wisdom is, is knowing that tomatoes are fruit, but you, put it in your salad right. not in your dessert you know so yeah. i think that's the key thing is going okay yeah i might have adhd and um you know i've got a few friends who you know entrepreneurial friends and i'm not trying to tell them or label them but on the other hand that they've got it i'm just saying hey go and check it out go and get a diagnosis because then you get some understanding then let them mm. yeah uh, and if it's not adhd at least you can maybe find out yeah because yeah, there's a lot yeah. of conditions that all the similar symptoms yeah, um, but once they're treated, they can actually disappear. Yeah, and, and we can try and treat things which really are all caused by ADHD. And on one of your podcasts there, and just going, hey, if doctors could also screen for it, I think we're just yeah, yeah. Um, just that's my ultimate up. goal. That's yeah, my ultimate yeah. goal to get that out there. And I know that's something that you're you're passionate yeah. about too. Yeah. Um, what is what is your biggest ADHD challenge or obstacle? Yeah, so I think it's the the tension between having lots and lots of ideas, Mm -hmm. uh, but then also just staying focused on the tasks at hand and filtering those ideas and and, and finding the right people who can do them rather than changing like like the weather, um, changing like the wind. Um, And then the other one is is the balance of hyper-focus, you know, so when you do get into a task, you can, you know, lose track of time and that's a little bit what was happening during all the lockdowns um you know the family's doing x y z and before you know it it's evening time and um the kids are off to bed so the other one is yeah you can get lost in time there but that hyper focus is a massive mm-hmm. strength but also you've got lots of ideas going so it's just that's the tension oh that and, causes tension yes that's a good yeah, point yeah. very good point yeah. yeah so you're just trying to balance hey cool i need a focus and then mm-hmm. when i get into the focus mode i can get really hyper focused for a long period of time but then also you've got all these ideas that distract you as we all know, and um, mm-hmm. you've got to sort of be able to filter that. Yeah. What was your biggest entrepreneurial success relation to? Yeah, yeah I your... suppose my biggest entrepreneurial success is, you know, being able to start a business from nothing um, and keeping it going and growing into a successful business now uh, with, you know, 5,000 sort of customers around New Zealand and, and some that are based overseas, um, diversifying the business into three different lines. Um, yeah, making a big financial impact and difference in people's lives, but as well as uh, balancing family life and marriage and being a dad and all those sorts of things and, and, and being involved in the community. So that's been, the, I guess, the biggest success is being able to hold those things mm-hmm. uh, together, juggle those things i guess it is and i'm hearing actually you just use the word impact um and i've been 
you just triggered something on me. Well, in a good way, just connected a few dots. Um, everyone I've been talking to lately, a lot of their biggest entrepreneurial success has to do with some sort of impact to someone or to an industry or to their clientele. And I think, you know, I think we're very impactful and sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit. So cool. that's good yeah. for you. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, you, you yeah. got to have something, you know, to, and again, especially with ADHD, it's like a, another level of difficulty that a lot of people don't have. And I guess if people are listening, it's like, Hey, just, just, give yourself a little bit of a break because you know, if you don't know much about it, you know, it is another level of um, difficulty that a lot of people just don't have every day. And then if you can make a difference on top of that, it's, it's significant, you know? Yeah. And, and a lot of it is our neurodiversity that actually creates that impact because we do think different differently. And then a lot of the challenge we have that's imposed by others because we don't do the same, don't think the same, we don't do things the same way. And then we're kind of held, uh, the negative saying you don't do it yeah. like we do like what the hell man what's you know get one yeah. with it but like every time yeah, i found yeah. every time i followed the rules i did not succeed <laughs> that's right yeah yeah well all the new things that get created or putting the man on the moon somebody had probably had a <laughs> random <with that>. yeah <laughs> you know? um what about uh, which symptom that have you transformed into a, uh into success uh so they, i'm just wondering like have you thought back before you were diagnosed what you now know is a symptom, but was pretty much key to your success as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I guess I like a challenge. You know, that, that's a common symptom, you know, that you tell them I can't do this, so I'm, I'm going to do it. So I guess for me, as even as a kid, you know, um, I was sort of not creative in, as far as the artistic side, but creative from an entrepreneurial side. Yeah, problem you know, solving other, side too, right? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, and just, just thriving on challenges, you know, doing a marathon, um, you know, starting a business, like I started a new line in the business and, and learn this. I did, did, did a bit of French at university, which was sort of, um, wasn't my strength, you know, just, just random things that, that a lot of people might not do or give up on. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, a lot of new ideas. Um, come and I'll go, yeah, no, I'm going to give that a go. Yeah. That's a challenge. I like that. I'm going to learn that and um pushing forward i guess all right so you're in the financial services industry correct yeah okay yeah. so what do you think you say you like new novel challenges what do you what did you do differently in your industry that made you different or attract like but you got five thousand clients that's quite a, that's quite a lot for a small company like your size yeah yeah i i guess um you know we had different advisors who are leaving the industry and and um so i thought well here's a challenge i'll i'll, I'll take over their, their customers and we'll help them and and i guess we've always tried to put the customers at the center and i guess it's more common practice but right from the get-go i saw the opportunity i just love working with people and and as their lives change i guess there's a new challenge how can i help them but for a lot of people it's just trying to sell them something they may not need a product or whatever. But for me, I thrived on the, on the relationships and the challenges and finding out what their needs were. And I, and I, yeah, putting customers at, at the center and out of that comes new business, new opportunities to help them. And it's, you know, it's a, a win, win uh, for us and for them. Whereas a lot of people, they'll just meet the customer. That's it. See you later. It's a transaction for us. It's a relationship, you know, mm-hmm. as they go through different stages of life. So, that's that's what I've I believe I've done differently, and it's becoming more practice. But and it's it's a novel thing. But you know, putting people at the centre is, you know, you'll 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 never go out of business. You can always add value if people's issues are at the middle of the starting. Right. right, that's very interesting because like what I'm hearing out of this, and I think it's probably very important for the listeners to notice. I think the subtle difference here is. He's it, you know, you're in it to, to sell a product or uh, service service or whatnot. But what was very key for here is your relationships are not transactional. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're not there to just to change what I can sell on to the next. Like, and then getting to know and understand their needs and being aware of them is a skill that's not out there. And I'm really starting to hear a trend here with all my guests that you know, impact is huge, but a lot of it is not mm. to be transactional. It's That's almost right. transformational. Yep. You're on the money. Yeah. Transformational. Yeah. Because a lot of people, especially in the financial space and, and I'm sure it's the same in, in Canada, but right around the world, financial literacy 
you know, wasn't or isn't taught in schools. And so you come in and you can just give people a little bit of understanding, hey, this is what you've got. You know, that's really transformational for a lot of people. What am I paying for here? Yeah. And, and we I, can walk. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I think like what you're saying, like to make it transformational, and like you said, like you, you're aware of their changes. You're be, uh, what was it? Customers are central and being aware of their changes and then finding their needs. That's what makes it transformational. That's right. Yeah. And then as those needs change, you come back in and you check in and see how they're doing. And okay, well, this is what you need. You don't need this anymore. You don't need to keep paying for this in the past. That was relevant back then, but this is what you need now. And yeah, people really appreciate that. I was going to say, but why would you do that if you might lose a service, like no longer have that service? Why would you want to be that proactive on their behalf is what I'm hearing. And I'm not challenging. Like, I just want you to kind of explain your reasoning, because I think this is very important for people to see this type of thinking. Yeah, well, I sort of think, you know, and again, with the ADHD sort of mindset, is it's a challenge going, hey, I'm going to I'm going to trust myself and that the customer will refer us, introduce us because we've done the right thing for them. And that's I guess that stands out these days. Hey, this person told me I don't need this um, or here's three or four ideas that will help you just mm -hmm. go away and do that yourself. Um, and so that that can really is a game changer for them and they'll come back and ask you know, for our help in, in six months or 12 months time. So I guess I've just trusted that doing the right thing is is, is, an, is novel and that that will bring success in the future. That could be our marketing tool. And did you just say doing the right thing is novel? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny, but it's almost, it's a sad truth, yeah. not yeah. just in the yeah. financial industry, but a lot of different industries. Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, People pay good money for a Rolex watch, you know, but a copy, they're not going to pay a lot, you know. Yeah. And we all know that you end up having to get another replacement if you get a copy. Yeah. Wow. So. Um, what would you, what do you, what are you on to next? What's your next project? Yeah. I guess one of the things is, is coming into a recession, but it was just a sort of a timely thing. I've been asked to do a few sort of um, workshops, you know, for young people recently. And I just want to develop maybe an online financial academy with some sort of standard, oh, cool. you know, uh, financial principles that are, you know, been around for centuries and, mm -hmm. and do that online. And so we can just reach more people and help more people, I guess, and build that financial literacy base that's out there. Because, you know, as we all know, relationships are issues, but also money is a big issue in families and businesses, you know. Mm -hmm. And so for business owners, people, staff can be an issue, but also for the staff, money can be an issue. So if we can sort of liberate people from those financial challenges mm -hmm. that they face, um, that's one I'm passionate about. The other one is now, I guess, I'm a beggar who just wants to uh, help others uh, as far as the neurodiversity. So yeah. uh, tell them where the food is. So now I feel a bit of an obligation. I'm just trying to really work that out is how it's it's not a big, it's not a well-known neurodiversity. Um, it's not well-known in New Zealand and it's very underfunded compared to other countries. Mm. And it can, for, for families, you know, as we know, it can be diff really difficult. And so to get a diagnosis, you can be waiting months, months, you know. So a financial literacy institution or coursing, uh, you yeah. said something to teach uh, financial literacy yeah. to kids. What would you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just stick with the kid right now. Like, what would be the one advice you right now you give a kid that you, the parent can pass on to their kids right now? Yeah, I would be just saying, hey, save a little bit, do some work. And save a little bit of pocket money every every time. Three buckets. Maybe give a little give a little bit away. Save a little bit to spend on on whatever it is, depending on the age. And then also um, invest a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you know, in five or ten years' time, that five dollars will become you know five hundred and a little bit of money every 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 week or month put aside. You know, will will compound and yeah, a little bit will add up in a hurry. That's right. Yep. All right. Cool. Um, what's the one piece of advice you want to give to our listeners? Yeah, I think if you if you know someone or you feel you've got symptoms around neurodiversity or ADHD, I'd say you know seek out some advice or you know professional opinion. You don't have to go all the way down the track, but you can get some understanding, which then gives you some. Well, you get some knowledge and you get some understanding, which then you can sort of 
um, get some wisdom about how to manage your mm-hmm. life and, and, and have a you know much more enjoyable life, I guess, rather than struggling. And I'd just say, hey, keep making progress. Keep going forward. You know, none of us are perfect, but just keep one, going forward one step at a time. Constant um, motion. Have, yep. Constant motion. Keep progressing. You might go back a couple, but just get up and go again. And yeah, seek, just get good groups of people around you to support you and and encourage you and, you know, don't do it alone. That's no. good. That's really good words of advice. Um, there's a few other things that um, Michael did say today that makes a lot of sense to me. Knowledge is understanding and understanding leads to wisdom. But that's also, you've got to be aware of that to make that happen. It just doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah. And, and as you and I know, Andre, you've got to get the who's. You've got to get people around you mm-hmm. that can give you that knowledge and understanding and wisdom you know we've all got blind spots you know and i think that's a very good point to have is i think a lot of us we just went through life relying ourselves and doing it ourselves and we do it it. yeah Yeah. and we have we have but it was painful (laughs) tiring so you know having a right the right people around you is very important Mm. and like i say awareness is applied knowledge yeah right? right but you have to apply it it's not just something you know um and I think it's this like is a very good yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's like driving on the motorway, you know, on the first or second gear, you know, and there's a there's a third or fourth or even fifth gear, and you can just enjoy the ride a lot much a lot better. And I think if you get people around you, you know, whether it's a spouse or your kids can help you or mm-hmm. your colleagues or even a prof- professional a doctor, professional opinion, you can then life is not as hard and you can just enjoy it a lot more. Yeah, it's less hard when you got other people with you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, and again, balancing the hyper focus is a challenge. Um, I think that's a lot of us. I think we need to yeah. be aware of. Um, yeah. And I don't know about you, but I know I've actually I had to kind of say around dinner time. If I'm kicked out of hyper focus, I I made a deal with myself. I cannot be upset because you know what? It's dinner time, and they need to almost slap me in the side of the head. But also yeah. make the rule is like it'll, it'll take you three or four attempts to get me out of it, right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. It has to be done now. I've got to finish this. Um. Um. But, yeah. Last thought. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, just around the families. You know, you've only got a certain period of time, and I just read something. I heard something recently about you got eighteen summers with your kids, and, and and my wife wisely said, you know, hey, when the kids get a bit older, they want to hang out with their friends. So yeah, you've you know. You can't take it with us. Yeah. So you got to enjoy those moments and times together. And I think the very big key thing that you said today is you keep things transformational and not transactional with your clients um, because you really keep your clients central and then being aware of their changes and finding their needs is what's making you, setting you differently in the industry. And I think that's a very good key takeaway for the listeners here keep your customers central be aware of their changes and i'm assuming michael you are aware of their changes because what you talk to them yeah we, <laughs> we keep in touch we keep in touch with them we don't we don't run away and hide yeah we actually embrace it I and mean, we we don't know what they're going to say but but that's the exciting part about it well that's awesome i'm very happy for your your progress 22 years in this and in, in this industry doing what you're doing i think is very good and um and then taking it upon yourself to once you start noticing the symptoms in you after your kids being diagnosed uh it's a tough decision for a lot of people and you know i'm very happy that you did because a lot lot of clarity i'm hearing from you and your understanding and then going the next steps uh you know i'm happy to hear that and uh, good on you thank you you. and i appreciate all what you're doing about you know um spreading the good news around the (laughs) the neurodiversity world around families and businesses because yeah it can make a big difference when you when you know what's going on and like you said before we're not alone there's crews around here that are living the same thing in the community and and there's online groups and podcasts you name it there's so much resources out there to give you some clarity and confidence so thank you michael and thank you the listener for uh listening and from all this, I'd like you to take a look on how you deal with your clients and see how you can make it more transformational for your clients than transactional. Sure. And, and on that note, we'll say thank you, Michael. We'll talk to you guys thank later. You, Andre.
Have a good day.